a production of the Mesa Chamber of Commerce. Visit us at mesachamber.org. Everybody, uh, my name is Bob Nelson. I'm the Communications you. Director for the Mesa Chamber of Commerce. I'd like to welcome you to today's chat and um, ask that while the presenter is speaking, uh, if you could uh, stay on mute unless he asks you to uh, ask a question or, or answer a question or engage in some way. Uh, but our, our speaker today actually reached out to Sally uh, recently and said, hey, I'd love to do a speech because, well, he just loves to speak. So literally today, he's going to be on Zoom like for 15 hours. And all he's going to do is just talk to people all day. That's all he does. Like, that's it. His name is Jonathan Baldock, and he works as, in an advisory role for Social HP with 10 plus experience years at LinkedIn, serving customers like Adventure, JP Morgan Chase, Johnson & Johnson, PepsiCo, IBM, amongst others. He is very highly skilled in social sharing best practices, utilizing data to build everyone's marketing channels, and expert social media recruitment, sales, and marketing strategies. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you now Mr. Jonathan Blaylock. Hey everybody. Hey, thanks, Bob. Appreciate it. Um, so, uh, look, I, I'm really happy to be here and uh, happy to give you guys some information about uh, LinkedIn best practices. I think that's uh, what we're talking about today. Uh, Bob, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Um, oh, you're good. But, okay, awesome. And uh, uh, yeah, thanks for the kind introduction. Um, as Bob said, uh, I'm, I'm currently an advisor for Social HP, but I did work for LinkedIn for almost 10 years. I finished up at the end of June in 2020. Yeah. So, uh, I probably overstayed my welcome for a good four or five years of that, but uh, I was there for quite a amount of time. Um, so um, my understanding for, for this audience, uh, most of you are independent business owners. And uh, so you might have your, uh, your, your own company or you have a, a, you know, a, a small staff of employees as well. And so we can talk about a variety of ways uh, to utilize LinkedIn and the platform in the best possible way. I think uh, the first thing we can talk a little bit about is uh, the platform itself. Um, so uh, to just give you a bit of history, uh, it was started on Cinco de Mayo uh, 18 years ago. Uh, so this was the 18th anniversary for LinkedIn. Um, I started at the beginning of 2011. And uh, when I started, uh, there were about 600 employees and there were 80 million members. Uh, now there's about 14,000 employees and there's 740 million members uh, globally. In the US, uh, you guys have a very high penetration. Uh, so I think there's something in the neighborhood of 170 million members. So most of the, uh, pretty much all of the professional working uh, workforce, as well as uh, a lot of blue collar uh, have started to add on. And then the fastest growing demographic on LinkedIn is students. Um, so they're coming straight out of college and university and uh, with LinkedIn profiles, and they're using that to connect and find jobs and, and start their careers. Initially, when I started at LinkedIn, uh, a lot of people looked at it like it was a, a place to be able to find a job. So uh, you, would, you would post what would appear your profile, but it was very much reminiscent of someone's uh, resume. And, uh, and then you would see jobs that are on LinkedIn and you would try and connect with people and, and you would do that. Um, at the same time, LinkedIn had started a, a, a division called uh, LinkedIn Marketing Solutions. And so they were offering B2B and a little bit of B2C uh, marketing uh, programs. So you could have uh, pay-per-click ads and you could put them and they could target uh, a specific audience. Um, that business has grown substantially and uh, it's a, a multi-billion dollar business. Um, their targeting is, is among the best out there. Um, so any kind of information that someone might put in their LinkedIn profile, you can use that if you want to do a paid campaign and you can target whoever it is, uh, you know, based on location, role, uh, level, how much money they make, whatever you want to do, you can target people. Um, as, the, uh, as the platform evolved uh, in, in the last number of years, it's become uh, also a place where people share uh, professional information. So um, it has gone from not just posting jobs and looking for an opportunity to be able to work, but also people being able to share their professional expertise and uh, some thought leadership and their, their market leadership. And so this is where we sort of head into today's conversation, which is how to best represent yourself and how to best represent your company. And so uh, you most likely all have a LinkedIn profile. Um, so feel free to let me know if you don't, but uh, I'll assume everyone has a LinkedIn profile. 
Um, so we could talk a little bit about best practices with your LinkedIn profile. Um, we can also talk about the fact that if you have a company, uh, you more than likely have a LinkedIn company page. If you don't, we can talk a little bit about the value of that LinkedIn company page as well. And, uh, and then we can head into the conversation about um, you know, how to best represent yourself. So with your LinkedIn profile, there are some best practices. Most of them are published already, and you can find some cheat sheets. Uh, but uh, uh, your LinkedIn profile, you definitely want to have a photo. So people with LinkedIn, with your profile, if you have a LinkedIn photo on there, uh, excuse me, a personal and professional photo on it, uh, you tend to get three to seven times more views of your LinkedIn profile. So you tend to be more accessible. Uh, people tend to want to click on your profile. Uh, um, so that's the first thing. Please do. I, I shared the screen if you want to share any, you know, any of your screen so people see what you're talking about. Okay, great. Yeah, I can, uh, let me just pull up LinkedIn. Bear with me for one second here. All right, are you able to see my screen? Super. Um, so I'm on LinkedIn, this is, uh, this is me, but I'll just quickly go over to my profile since it's nice and easy. Oops, clicked the wrong spot. Um, so, um, I, I'm involved in a few things, but you can see I have a photo. Um, this area here is your banner. Um, so uh, when you go to click in to edit it, it will actually tell you uh, the dimensions of the kind, the size of photo uh, that you can put in. So if I click change photo, um, oh, actually it's not giving me the dimensions here. Um, when you go to upload the first time, it'll actually tell you um, the dimensions. So uh, the proportions of, of what that photo needs to be. Um, but basically, um, it's in an ideal scenario, you have a little banner um, that's either of your company, um, which you can see I, I launched an app recently, so this is about my app. But um, um, so, you, you, you know, ideally, you want to have a profile photo, you can populate in a, a banner as well. Um, and then if I just scroll down, um, you can see I've got my name and my title. Uh, you can see my location, et cetera, et cetera. Um, in this area here, uh, you can not only put your title, but you can also put in a theme. A lot of people do that. So for example, you know, connecting with professionals, um, wh whatever it is uh, that you want to, uh, to put in there. And what I'll do is I'm actually just going to um, scroll down a little bit further here. Um, you can actually move these sections around. Um, so for example, once I get below my activity and I get into experience, um, if I want to, I can click the edit and I can click these bars and I can move sections around. Uh, but most often people utilize this area here to put in information about, you know, their current role or the current business that they own and what it's about. Um, and then you have an opportunity for education and then people can endorse you. And so you can see um, uh, you can add skills and then people can endorse you for skills. So people have said, you know, I'm pretty good at account management and recruiting and so on. And then people can, you can give recommendations, et cetera. Um, so uh, your, uh, something else to quickly note at the top, I'll, I'll just say is that you can edit your uh, public URL. And so you can see mine is linkedin.com forward slash in forward slash my actual name. Um, so you can actually edit your personal profile um, because a lot of times when you go to uh, someone's profile, uh, let me just click on somebody else's really quickly. Um, let's go to Debbie's. Uh, she's done the same thing and she's personalized it. If you don't personalize it, um, then what you'll end up with is a, a number, like you're a member number. And so to make it easier, if you're going to share your URL, um, then, uh, or if you're going to put it in your email signature, having your name in the URL uh, makes it a little bit easier to remember for people. Um, so those are some of the tips around uh, your profile. Um, you want to have that filled in. Ideally, you want to, the, um, the tool itself will tell you what percentage of your profile is complete. The more complete your profile, the more searchable you are. So take that into consideration. Um, and then uh, beyond that, um, I would say because you're all business owners, you're going to want to have a LinkedIn company page. And so I'll just give you an example. Uh, this is the one for my app. And I'll just click view as a member. And so you can see I've got a little 
uh, banner profile here and a little logo. And um, when you create your company page, every single month, you will be able to uh, invite people to follow your company page. Uh, so you can invite up to 100 people without paying any money for that. And so uh, that's a great idea to uh, add your connections to follow your company page. Um, so then that way, when you do an update for your company page, like a post, for example, here, whatever product or service that you have, um, then when you do that, everyone that's following your company page will see that post. Now, if you also then like or comment on your own post, then it'll go to everyone that you're connected to. So that's how the, uh, this, this works. So if I go over to my um, home tab here and I click back over to my profile, it says I have 500 plus connections. I have about 2000 connections. And so if I do a post or if I like or comment or share anything, it'll go to everyone I'm connected to. And so when you're on your company page, you're not gonna have as many followers for your company page initially, and, that, and you can build that up over time. But as you're building that up, you have the ability to be able to, uh, to create content, post it in there, and then if you amplify it yourself and share it out, and perhaps ask your employees to share that content out, uh, then you can create a lot of visibility. Now, um, your company page, you have a few different things that you can do, and you can see here, um, what I've got is you've got a products page, you've got a content page, analytics and activity. And in products, you can actually create either showcase pages or individual pages for each of your products. So that way, if you're offering a variety of different services, I'll just go back to viewing it as a member. Um, uh, then uh, as you fill that out um, and people come to visit your company page, they have more to see, more to investigate. So rather than just specifically listing your products as page posts, um, you can actually create a separate tab and it'll list your products and then you can create sections. The about section, you wanna provide a description of your company like you would the about for you as to like, you know, what your objectives are. Um, posts, you do want to do posts and updates uh, periodically so that that way you're creating some visibility for your, your company page. Um, jobs, uh, LinkedIn will automatically scrape jobs right off the web. So if you have any jobs, it will post them, but uh, you can add in jobs if you're hiring. And then those job uh, posts will automatically go and look for the right people that match up on LinkedIn uh, to your post and try and drive visibility and people towards that job. Um, so the, the keys for uh, your company page is creating content like first it's filling it out, but second is creating content uh, because content will drive people to see your company page and interact with it. And I would say the same thing goes with your own professional profile. And that's one of the big differences of, of you know, what's happened with LinkedIn in the last few years is that people are now sharing more information. And so uh, we'll talk a little bit about, or at least I'll talk a little bit about um, the kinds of information you want to share on LinkedIn. There's three types. There's thought leadership, there's industry news, and then there's your company content or your personal content. And uh, for thought leadership, uh, you can find that, like even if you just were you know, on harvardbusinessreview.com uh, or uh, you know, uh, Wall Street Journal, any, any, any third party publication, if you see an article and you think the people that you're connected to would uh, basically get some value from reading that article, um, then what you would do is uh, let's just see here. I'll quickly go over to Harvard Business Review. Jonathan, um, let me know when you've got a second. We do have a question in the chat. So okay, all right. I'll, all right. I'll just pause. Uh, I'll pause right after this. Um, so let's say um, you know this is a uh, an article that I think you know. Hey, look, people are getting back to the offices now post COVID. Um, you know, here's some great tips. So what I can do is I can just copy this and then I can go over to LinkedIn and then I can create a, a new post. So just start a post. And then if I just paste that in, it will automatically grab that article. Here it is. And then I can just write in my little piece as to why this is readable and, and why I think this is a great article. 
I can do the same with industry information. And I can also do that with a story you know, that I want to publish. Um, the reason why we want to do these things is because when we add value to our network, um, then we're getting likes, comments, visibility, but you're building your professional profile. And on LinkedIn, it's one of the, the few places where you're going to get almost no, if not zero negative feedback. Places like Twitter, uh, it's, it's, uh, it can be a bit of a, a storm. Um, same thing with Facebook. There's a lot of you know, people debating and, and uh, um, it, it can be unpleasant. Whereas LinkedIn, it's pretty much a purely professional, a pure, pretty much a purely positive environment. And so sharing out content that's valuable and helps people, um, then people remember you as, oh, there's, you know, there's that person, either they know you or they're connected to you. And they think of you as somebody that's uh, adding value. So now when you, in the future, when you post something about uh, work that you're doing or a project that you're working on or your company or product and service from your company, uh, they're much more likely to take that seriously because you've been adding value to the, to the network. So I'll pause just for a second and uh, let's just go to the chat. So Hashtags. The first question is around events. Okay. Uh, and specifically kind of looking at how, what are some ways to make events more visible? And then uh, in addition to that, uh, how do you take a small circle pick uh, um, take off, I'm assuming, the small circle pick on the event post. Um, so I'm not sure what that portion of the question is, but let's just talk a little bit about events. So also LinkedIn Live has uh, come about, and uh, so that's being utilized. It's not available to every member yet, but it is rolling out. And so um, first off, um, posting uh, for events is a great idea uh, because if you post for that, it'll go to your entire network. And then if one person in your network likes it, then that person's network, everyone in their network sees it. So there's a bit of a network effect there. Uh, so for example, if 10 people like it, if I have, um, I'll, I'll quickly give you a bit of LinkedIn stats. The average member has 800 connections on LinkedIn. So if I post something and I have 800 connections, 800 people will see it. And if 10 people like it, then another 8,000 people will have it in their newsfeed. So the amplification effect of a like, a comment, or a reshare is pretty significant. So definitely posting about events that are coming up are great. Uh, whether they're in-person events, whether they're a, uh, an online event, uh, whether it's a podcast, whatever you're trying to create visibility for, it's a great idea. Um, and then same thing, special offers, anything like that, as long as you're not overloading it. Um, and so there's a, a content sharing ratio uh, that's a best practice that LinkedIn uh, would preach, which is for every six pieces of content that you share, three pieces are thought leadership, two pieces are about the industry, and one is about your company. And if you stick to that ratio, then you're adding value to the network. People are seeing this like thought leadership post and they're like, oh, wow, that's super handy. Thanks so much for sharing that. Then they're seeing something about the industry. And this isn't hard work to, you know, like content's available all over the place. It's not like you have to write it. So just picking articles and then just sharing it every now and again. But if you stick to that ratio, then when you post something about your company, post about an event or post about a product or service, people are much more receptive. Whereas if you consistently are posting about products and services, they will tune out. And there's a way to tune out on LinkedIn where they don't have to disconnect with you, where they literally just click on the three dots when you post something and they just click unfollow. And then they will no longer get any news uh, in their feed uh, the, from anything that you're doing. Um, so uh, I know that's a, a common practice on something like Facebook, where you've got a product page and you just you know just post, 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 post. But on LinkedIn, you want to balance it out. You want to add value to the network, add value to your community. And a lot of times, when you find a thought leadership or industry article, if it's related to what you are an expert in, you're a subject matter expert. Just adding your perspective, adding your, your point of view is really, really a, a helpful addition. So if you see, you know, for example, like an article that says like, you know, um, when you're back to work post COVID, so people are going back to offices and it says like, you know, the top five things to watch for, you know, if you have an opinion on one of those and you have, you know, a little bit of extra information, like this is an area that you're, you happen to have a lot of experience with, just adding in that perspective helps people because as they you know, go back to the office and they are back in that situation, 
that little tidbit that you gave them could be could be a, a really helpful thing. And then they remember you as being somebody that's that's adding value. Um, so uh, I think hopefully I answered that well. I'm not sure what the port the portion of the question was about um, uh, the image, uh, but um, with any posts on LinkedIn, uh, and you can Google it, but with any posts on LinkedIn, um, they will give you the dimensions of the image that uh, fits best. So if you crop your image to fit that, that's great. And there are some tools, I don't know the names of them, but there are some tools that will auto uh, size your images for any network that you're putting them on. So you just sort of tell the tool, hey, I'm about to post on Facebook. And then it will, it'll say like, which, you know, where are you posting it? And then it'll correct the image and it'll right size the image for you and crop it. So then that way it won't get distorted because some images get pulled wide, some images get pulled tall. So, uh, and I'm not a, you know, I'm not an expert on sizing uh, uh, images, but uh, there are tools that will help you do that. And uh, I think there's a bunch of them that will uh, do it for free. Uh, and then someone just put in a note about Canva. Um, Canva has a, a, a free option. And I think there's a lot of uh, functionality in there. And that, that platform uh, keeps uh, adding a lot of functionality uh, all the time. So it's, it's one that's really taking off and, and I hear is very valuable. I have a couple of friends from LinkedIn that now work there. So um, it's a good, good place. Um, uh, next up, um, hashtags. hashtags. Yeah, so hashtags. Um, LinkedIn is encouraging more use of hashtags and it is cert they are now searchable on LinkedIn. So, um, but you don't wanna, you don't wanna put too many hashtags in your post. Um, so ideally you just want one and maximum you want three. Uh, if you do any more than three, the algorithm will kind of ignore what you're doing and just like it, because it, it, um, it won't make them all searchable. So it'll kind of pick a couple and it may pick the ones that you don't want. So the idea is to, is to be a little more focused um, on um, what topics your subject is about and what you're posting about. Um, so um, I'll, I'll just talk a little bit about um, when you're sharing content and uh, the value of it and then the reach. And so I'll give you an example. And this, this applies whether you're a business of one or you have a bunch of employees. Uh, but to give you a quick example, the average company, if it has 50 employees, uh, so the average company on LinkedIn, if they have 50 employees, has about 800 to 1,000 followers. And that includes the 50 employees that work there. So to give you a quick example, industry news, whatever it is you're doing, if you share that story, 800 people are going to see it. Then if you ask one employee to share it, another 800 people will see it. So if you have 50 employees and you ask all 50 people to share it, 40,000 people, it'll show up in their news feed. So the power of, of engaging your employees, the power of utilizing your network to be able to share content for you and expand that reach is going to be very valuable to your company. And most employees do not have a big overlap of their networks. So for example, if a company has 50 employees, odds are they all have, you know, most of them are connected to each other on LinkedIn, but unless they all went to the same school, had the same first job, same second job, same third job, uh, most of their uh, networks do not overlap outside of the company. And so the average overlap of people's networks uh, is only 3%. So 97% of their networks are not the same. So even if you have two employees and you ask them to share out a story, you will likely double your reach because those two employees have very different networks from each other. All right, next question. We do have a question about the frequency of your posts. So I know how often types of content, but like what's a good, how many posts in a given day or week or. Yeah. So, I mean, I think it depends on your, your area, your industry. Um, but uh, I would say if you're not posting a lot right now, uh, once a week might be, you know, might be pretty reasonable to start with. Because it's not heavy lifting on you. You don't have to do a lot of work to do it. 
Um, and then once you get comfortable with that, I'd say work your way up to maybe twice a week. That's a pretty decent sharing cadence. Um, when I was at LinkedIn, you know, a lot of LinkedIn employees were sharing multiple times a day, but we worked at LinkedIn and we were at a social company and the expectation was that you're, you're probably pretty social and you're sharing quite a bit. Um, but I, I don't want to make this a burden where you feel like your new full-time job is finding content and having to share it on the platform. I think just engaging on the platform is very valuable. There are some stats around that that are uh, compelling. Um, so um, there's a, um, something that you can find, which is called the LinkedIn Social Selling Index. And if you Google that, LinkedIn Social Selling Index, um, there's a link for LinkedIn on LinkedIn. And if you click on that and you put in your member number or your user profile, it will actually give you a stat, like a percentage. What is your social selling index? And that social selling index is really composed of three things. Um, so one is, um, are, are you connecting with people? So are you building your network? The second piece is, um, are you sending in mails? Are you messaging and communicating with people? And the third factor is, are you sharing content? And those three things will uh, calculate into a social sharing index. The higher your social sharing index, or social selling index rather, the higher that social selling index, um, then the more socially engaged you are. The reason why it's good to be socially engaged or have a high social sharing index is if you look at, a, I'll, and I'll give you like a standard corporate company that has a sales team, um, if you take salespeople that have a high social selling index, and then you take salespeople that have a low social selling index, the salespeople that have a high social selling index are 70% more likely to hit their sales number, their annual quota. And we know this because uh, we would uh, very consistently ask clients, um, you know, which of your salespeople are hitting their sales quota? which of your salespeople are not. And then we would calculate that against who had a high social selling index and who had a low social selling index. And the net, the reality is um, it, it, sort of the net of it, I guess, is um, being in front of people and being top of mind means that they're thinking of you more often. They're thinking about your business more often. Um, so you're, you're, you're sort of in a way having a constant conversation or having constant touch points. And to give you an example, uh, like a real world example, let's say I'm looking for a, uh, to buy a car and I'm going to be buying a car in the next six months. It could be, I could lease it or I could buy it, but I know in six months I'm going to be getting a car. If I'm driving down the road and I see a billboard for a Mercedes, I don't go, oh, I'm going to have to buy a Mercedes now. You know, one ad's not going to do it. But if Mercedes does a great job and I'm looking in that kind of, ilk where it's like, you know, BMW, uh, Audi, and, you know, and I'm not considering a Mercedes, but over the course of those six months, Mercedes has multiple touch points with me where they're putting out information about what, how great they are as a company, what their products and services, like, you know, why they add value and why they're, you know, maybe I care about uh, the environment and they show me how they're, you know, how sustainable they are, you know, all the value points that they have, all the awards that they're winning and the great customer service that they have. And, uh, over time, I get this kinship with the brand and it's all of those touch points, which is called the buyer's journey. That buyer's journey, the more you can be involved in the buyer's journey, whether you have five touch points or 26 touch points or 50 touch points, the point is at the time when someone goes to make a decision to buy that product, if you've been top of mind consistently throughout that course, that period that leads up to them making that decision, and they're in the market for the product or service that you sell, you're now in the decision-making process. Now it's, well, I was only looking at Audi and BMW, but I, I think I should be looking at Mercedes as well. And so it's a way to get your business front and center, to get you front and center, to keep you top of mind and to keep you as part of that decision-making process. And again, I don't want to make it heavy lifting where you think you know your new full-time job is finding and writing posts and and, and sharing out details. But if you're doing none of it now, just a little bit of it will make a substantial difference. And it may not pay off in like, hey, I made a post, how come I didn't get seven calls? Uh, it's, it, you know, we're talking about the buyer's journey. And so 
when we talk about a, a typical sales funnel, um, the buyer, you know, the awareness portion is what we're working on with our social selling, which is, um, you know, hey, here's my company. Hey, here's a bit about me. Hey, here's some thought leadership. Here's some industry news and with my take on it. Uh, now they're starting to think of me as a subject matter expert. And I'm building up my brand. I'm building up the professional uh, level of my profile and my company's profile so that over time, when they are at that point where they need that product or service, you want to be at least in consideration rather than who is that or I have no idea who that company is. So it's a great way to um, uh, basically without spending any money, without paying for any paid campaigns, completely for free, but just a little bit of your time and effort to be in the conversation and being part of that, uh, the, you know, the evaluation process at the end when they're looking for uh, a tool, a product, a service or anything that, that you do. So right, it looks I, like, Jonathan, we've got a yep. couple of questions. Uh, one is around LinkedIn Premium. So if you want to touch sure. on that real quick. Yep. So um, the highest percentage of LinkedIn accounts are free accounts. Um, LinkedIn does make a lot of money from LinkedIn Premium because, you know, when you add up the however many millions of, of users that have LinkedIn Premium, it is a good revenue source for them. But LinkedIn Premium is not for everybody. So LinkedIn Premium is really valuable. Um, if you're looking to reach out to people and connect with people that you don't know. And so uh, with a free account, you get a, a certain number of in-mails, meaning um, almost like an email, but on LinkedIn. So they call it in-mail. And so you get a certain number of in-mails on LinkedIn. And that means if I find your profile and we're not a first degree connection, I can send you a message saying, hey, I'm, you know, it'd be great to connect with you or um, you know, uh, here's why I'm reaching out. Would you be interested in having a conversation? So you're, you're limited with how many of those you get. With, it, uh, with a LinkedIn premium account, you have more of those. So it, it amplifies the amount of, of messaging that you can do. So that's the first. Um, the second is, as I look at your profiles, uh, if I have a free account, you'll actually see, hey, Jonathan, you know, just viewed my account. Um, with a premium account, if I'm doing a lot of viewing of people's profiles and I want to be a little more incognito, um, I can have a setting to say someone in this industry, or I can set it to anonymous. So it'll just say someone viewed your profile. Um, and then that way it'll give me a chance to do all the research I want to do on a particular company or particular people before I do that outreach without notifying them all. I'm actually doing all that research and I'm viewing their profiles. So uh, that's, that's, I would say the sort of the two key notes in my experience on uh, why people will, uh, will look at uh, LinkedIn premium as an option. And then the, the second question is around, it sounds like it's around in-mail and using the, that messaging service as opposed to say a traditional email to initiate a contact and say set up a meeting. Yeah, so um, in-mail is handy because uh, if you don't have the person's email address, but you can find them on LinkedIn, it's a great way to start the conversation. Um, I would say once that conversation starts, most people then take it from LinkedIn over to email. Um, but if, you, if you've if you never reached out to them before and you're reaching out to a new company and, and you don't know their email naming convention and you haven't invested in tools to be able to try and identify and figure that out, then this is a great way to do it. Um, the thing I would recommend is to, when you do send an email, is to be upfront um, but not asking for business. Um, so you're, you're explaining why you're connecting. You know, for example, like, I, you know, I see you have these kinds of connections. You know, uh, you're the kind of person that I would like to connect with in order to be able to expand my, you know, my network. Um, you know, perhaps there's an opportunity for us to do business at some point together in the future. Um, so, you know, giving them that. Or if you need, for example, um, you're researching uh, a new market that perhaps you want to go after for your business. Um, a great way is to ask for their advice. Um, so you, you send a message like, hey, you know what? Um, you know, I'm starting to look at uh, trying to do business with people in your industry. And I'm wondering if you could provide some advice as to the best ways that I could do that and how to approach that. That would be really appreciated. They then respond back with, yeah, you know, I can, I can give you a hand because most people are pretty helpful. So then they respond back with, yes, you book a quick call. You have that conversation, you're asking for their advice and you're saying, look, this is how, you know, I typically approach, you know, a new industry, but, you know, you're from that industry. Does that approach work? 
Um, what do you recommend? You're, you're the kind of person that I would want to be selling to. You know, how would I get my product or service in front of you? One, you're asking for their advice, but two, you're giving them an opportunity. You're, you're telling them a little bit about what you do. So if they're interested, they're going to tell you like, oh, you know what? You should do this, this, and this, but also actually I'm in the market for that. And that would be great. But it does give you that option of getting a higher uh, response rate rather than just, hi, do you want to buy my stuff? Um, Jonathan, this next question wasn't in the chat, but it's one that I think maybe might be worth spending a little bit of time on. Uh, LinkedIn sure. added a number of different services over the years. Uh, SlideShare comes to mind. Um, what services have they incorporated that you think might want to be on top of mind for people? Um, it depends on depends on the business that you have. If you're a sole proprietor, I think the you know or, or, you know small business owner. I think the, the first one is, um, you know, LinkedIn premium. You know, if, if, if you're going to consider one, that's probably the first product. Um, otherwise, um, most of those things like SlideShare and whatnot, they've just integrated. And so it's just really just understanding what's, what's in the ecosystem that I can use. Uh, so for example, uh, when I do a post, I can create a, um, a slideshow in the post. So if I have, if I want to tell a story with images, um, rather than have one image and then write a bunch of stuff, I can write a little bit of uh, content and then have three images that people can click and you know, they can slide across. So you can, you, you can do those kinds of things. Um, LinkedIn Live, I would say, you know, watch for, um, but you wanna have a specific reason as to why you would wanna do it, but it would be obviously a live event that you can invite people to and, and then they can engage with you at that time. You can also record it and then post it later. Um, so if you've got, for example, like a website launch um, or you've got a new product launch, you can invite your connections um, to be able to talk through and, and you can host it. Um, and then uh, I would say um, some other products, if you've got a sales team and uh, you're looking to develop new, like, new clients and, and relationships, uh, LinkedIn has a product called LinkedIn Sales Navigator. And uh, Sales Navigator, uh, basically what it does is it connects the networks of all of your employees or however, you know, whatever that is. Um, how, uh, you, we add up all of the connections of those people and then you have reach into everyone's network. And so it makes it easier for you to then network your way in. And then Sales Navigator will also tell you, it'll keep an eye on things. It'll tell you how you're connected to somebody you're trying to reach out to. Um, it will tell you um, uh, if somebody, if you can like follow accounts and companies and it'll tell you like if somebody was hired, it'll tell you if somebody left, it'll tell you if somebody's been promoted, uh, it'll keep an eye on all that kind of stuff. So that way you don't have to try and pay attention to it in case somebody that you were prospecting to leaves and you need to now figure out who, it, who, who next you need to prospect to. So uh, next question is about automation. Uh, uh, Asker is saying they've started to see more automation in their uh, LinkedIn mail outreach and communications. Is that something that you would probably recommend or like kind of coach against or kind of what are your thoughts on that? I mean, I, I think it depends on your business. Um, and there's, it's not LinkedIn doesn't have a tool for automation, but there are separate tools that you could like invest in. So for example, if I want to send out constant connection requests, um, then there are tools that do that. Um, and, uh, and so then you're, you're basically paying for a separate platform. Um, I think that one, uh, I'm trying to think of the name of it. Um, I'll remember it in a second. Sorry. This is Dan. There's one called Duck Soup. D-U-X. Oh, okay. Yeah, I haven't heard of that one. Um, but if I remember the name of, of the, the one I'm thinking of, I'll, I'll let you know. But there's, there's a bunch of products um, that exist that can kind of automate portions of LinkedIn. Um, so I would say um, um, use them if you need to reach out to a lot of people. Um, but if you're doing that, try and do it in a way that people are going to be receptive. Um, so if it's just like a, hey, do you want to connect? Do you want to connect? Do you want to connect? Um, you're going to get a low response rate. And when you get that low response rate, uh, a lot of people will click, I don't know this person. And if you get enough, I don't know this person uh, responses to your invitation requests, LinkedIn will actually freeze your ability to connect with anyone. 
and they'll lock your ability to send messages and they'll basically freeze your account for a while. And uh, because they, because they don't want that, you know, they don't want the spamming uh, effect on the network. So you have to do it in a way that is very engaging. And those tools will probably make recommendations as to, you know, the best way to reach out, uh, et cetera. But um, so I would say, you know, if you can avoid it, I would say avoid it. Uh, but otherwise, you know, if you think it's, it's a necessary thing for your business to connect with a whole bunch of people in a particular space, um, then maybe give it, you know, give it some consideration. So the next question comes from as you accumulate connections. Does the accumulation of connections uh, get you any recognition or unlock any features or create you as an influencer or anything like that? Um, it doesn't. Um, so there are different strategies with connections, uh, although, and I mentioned I have about 2000 connections, um, they're all clients that I was working with at LinkedIn. So over the course of almost 10 years at LinkedIn, I, I'd be working with one client and I'd end up with seven or eight or 10 connections at that company. And I had 50 clients at any given time. And every year they were cycling through a bunch of different connections or clients and then also different teams. And so I was constantly adding in uh, new kinds of, of client connections. Um, so um, there's different schools of thought as to who you should be connecting with. Um, my first boss at LinkedIn, his philosophy on connecting was um, if I could call that person or reach out to that person and say, hey, do you want to grab a coffee? and they would grab a coffee with me, or I would want to grab a coffee with them, then that's who I would connect with. And so if people try to connect with him and he doesn't know them, he would just say, hey, currently we're not doing business together. And at the moment, or in the short term, I don't see us doing business together. So if there's an opportunity for us to work together in the future, I'm happy to connect. But until then, you know, I'm not connecting with anybody unless we're like, I'm currently working with them. Um, so that's how he kept his network small. There are other people that will connect with everybody. LinkedIn has, I think, capped the number of connections. It might be 30,000. It could be 20,000. Um, and they're just literally, they're just like adding everybody, adding everybody, adding everybody. And, uh, and their thought is the more people I have access to, you know, the more, you know, maybe the more powerful I can be in my messaging. Um, so, you know, I don't have a strong opinion one way or the other. Uh, mine is closer to the first, which is that I need to know these people or there should be some reason I've had a conversation with them or they're my client or they could be my client and I'm reaching out to them to you know, build that relationship. That's typically how I go, but you know, I, I, I can only give you, you know, just how people are approaching it. Um, and then, and then go from there. So um, talk for a minute about groups. Cause I know you've talked about pages. Um, yep. Talk about LinkedIn's philosophy around groups and how people can utilize groups. Um, groups, some are closed and some are open. Um, they can be very, very valuable because it usually the groups are on a particular topic. So for example, uh, if you own your own recruiting business and, uh, and then there's an HR group or a talent acquisition group where there's hundreds of potential clients that are in that group, you may, you may want to try and join that group and start engaging in a conversation. But I would say um, if you join a group and there's an opportunity for you to do business, I wouldn't be advertising my business. Um, if you go in and you start like posting, like, here's my business and here's my contact information. And if you need the service, uh, LinkedIn is a platform where you'll, they'll tune you out pretty fast. Whereas if you join that group, let's say you sell insurance and there's a whole bunch of people that have, you know, that are potential buyers of insurance rather than posting like. I sell insurance and you guys should buy from me. Um, it, as they're having those conversations, just adding market information. So if they're saying like, oh, you know, like we're struggling on this topic, just being helpful and not actually pitching is the best way. Because then they start to get to know you as that person that's the expert on insurance. The expert has a great opinion. Um, and then when they need insurance, they'll be like, oh, well, who's that person in our group that's always so helpful and seems to know their stuff so well? And then they'll come to you. And then, you know, once in a blue moon, you can say, yes, you know, like if someone asks like, you know, are, do, you, do you sell that? But LinkedIn's the, the better way to go is to build yourself up as that subject matter expert before you start pitching your product rather than um, going straight in for the kill. 
And do the um, recommendations and the skills that you would choose in your profile, do those influence search results? They do. Everything you put into your LinkedIn profile uh, affects the search results, including the content that you post. So it's all indexed. Um, and then uh, very recently, LinkedIn just announced that your product pages will also get indexed. So if you, for example, um, let's say your website is not you know, search engine optimized, um, LinkedIn, if you create product pages, um, LinkedIn just announced that they've got an arrangement with Google where basically all of those pages will get indexed. So then uh, if you do a Google search for those kinds of products or services, if your website's not pulling up any search results, uh, LinkedIn will. And normally most people, if you type in someone's name, uh, the first thing that will come up is their LinkedIn profile. That's most people. Uh, now soon that will be the case with their products and services if they're small business owners, which is very helpful for small business owners because now you're more searchable, you're more findable. So it's worth it to build out your LinkedIn product pages. I have a question about that. It's Lori. Sure, hi, Lori. Uh, hi. The product pages, if you have several locations, would it be more beneficial to have the location be listed as a product? Or are you really talking about individual products and services within um, the, the page? Um, yeah, product pages are usually more focused on the specific products and services and less so about locations. Okay. Because then if I get drawn to that product, then I can just quickly check and see, you know, are you near me? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. So I'm getting a, a couple of questions that I think I'll, um, Jonathan, if it's okay, I'll kind of refer to you on email later. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. But if anybody else has any questions, happy to, to give you a chance to, to throw them out there right now. Um, and I could quickly talk a little bit about influencers if you like. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, so, so LinkedIn uh, had, uh, and still does to a certain degree, have a, an influencer list. It was 500 people. They filled up that 500 right away. And, um, and so what they did is they basically, you know, invited people like Richard Branson and, you know, CEOs from various different companies and some, some thought leaders, et cetera, from various different industries. And, uh, and then to be an influencer, they're obligated to write a couple of pieces of original content that they would post per month, which probably those people have like communications people or marketing people that would do it for them. Um, but the, the world of being an influencer on LinkedIn has become more accessible and now more than ever. Whereas historically, um, you would have to be a, a CEO of a company that had you know, 300,000 followers to reach 300,000 people. But if I have my own post and I ask my employees to share it or like it, I create that visibility for myself. Same thing if I have a few like close connections, we can make an agreement every time we do like posts that are building ourselves up that my, my close group will amplify that for us. And it's that network effect is really what's important here. And so um, if I make a post right now, I have 2000 connections, so 2000 people will see it. But if I have 10 close friends or if I have 10 employees and I ask them to like it or comment on it or reshare it, and they don't have to do it very often, and I'll do it for them, then that agreement, then immediately I get that amplification. So now my post isn't just seen for the people that are connected or follow me, but now my post is seen by all of those other people's networks. And so uh, the power of um, building out your visibility is really, really important um, because each network that you, you add into that you now have like, uh, you know, a post that goes into their network, that's all people that would not have seen you previously or all people that, you know, wouldn't have seen your post previously. So um, a quick example, which is, and I will quickly reference it, uh, where I consult for right now, which is Social HP. Um, if, you know, if you have, and I referenced this at the beginning of the conversation, we have a platform, we pull in the content and we can, you know, have employees share out content, for example, at scale. Um, but we're building out also the functionality to be able to have people like things at scale so that none of the employees really have to do any of the work. And you just, you know, one administrator just goes, hey, I want everyone to like this and it gets amplified. If I take one post and I have 50 people like it, instead of reaching 800 people, I can reach 40,000 people. 
And so that's a, a great example of utilizing this platform because each person's network that I get into, that's you know, 800 potential new customers. There's another 800 potential new customers and so on and so on. And then to consistently have that view or that reach into it, then you're talking, uh, going back up into that evergreen buyer's journey kind of conversation, which is evergreen, meaning it's always on. You're sharing content. It's always going into those networks. It's always driving visibility for you and your company. Again, not all just product related, but like thought leadership, industry news, et cetera, always getting that published and populated out. Um, then uh, the net goal is when people are ready to make that decision on any of the products or services uh, that you represent, uh, you're much more likely uh, to get people coming inbound rather than you having to do all the work for outbound. And a paid campaign on LinkedIn, the smallest one I ever did was $10,000 and it lasted three weeks for one of my corporate clients. Um, we had clients that spent $50 million a year on LinkedIn paid ads. If you came to me and you said, um, hey, I want to have an advertising campaign running on LinkedIn, like a, literally a small business, an advertising campaign running, and I want to target all of the people that matter to me, like all of my current customers and my future customers, you, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars just for a small business if you wanted to do it for a whole year. Or you can just share content yourself. You're connected to your existing customers. You're connecting to your prospects. Your employees are connected to your existing customers. Your employees are connected to your prospects. And so sharing out that content, it's now free, constantly available to you. You're building a relationship with those audiences, raising your professional profile, staying top of mind, and getting yourself into the position that when people are ready to make that decision, you're likely in the conversation. And none of it will cost you any money. And it'll be very similar to the effect of running a paid campaign costing you hundreds of thousands of dollars for a year. So you had mentioned early on um, one of the differences between uh, LinkedIn and, and Facebook and Twitter was the sort of the quality of the conversation and that kind of thing. Um, real quick as we wrap up, what are there any other sort of differentiating factors that people want to always kind of keep in mind? Like this LinkedIn is a good tool for X or that kind of thing. Well, uh, my similar to what I mentioned, which is that, you know, it's a, a primarily a positive platform. When I say primarily, I mean like almost exclusively. And so with that, um, it's the one platform where you can completely control your message. Mm -hmm. If I post on Facebook, who knows what people are going to say. But if I post on LinkedIn, pretty much everyone's going to be positive about it. And if they want to be negative about it, they're not going to do it. The reason why is because if they are negative, there's no anonymity. Like literally I wrote something bad and then everyone that I'm connected to is like, oh, that's pretty rude of Jonathan. And so there's, you know, there's no ability for me to be able to hide behind the, you know, the veil of, of anonymity on, on other platforms. And, and so being able to control your message, like, which is brand reputation, that's critical because the reputation of your brand, if you can only move it up and to the right, you know, that's where you want to go, right? Adding value, being more of a subject matter expert, looked upon as a thought leader in that industry, um, you know, being top of mind and so on. That's, that's, that's what you want. So, and LinkedIn's the platform that everyone can do that. And you're not going to get, you're not going to get people sort of throwing you under the bus. And so, um, you know, there are organized, like pharmaceutical organizations spend millions and millions of dollars every year on brand reputation. And a lot of it is spent on platforms like LinkedIn because no one's going to really, you know, be, be disparaging for the most part. And so, you know, this is, this I would say is a critical thing is just to think about when you think about, you know, it's my business, it is your business. And what people think about your business and what people say about your business is critical. And so if you can have an environment where it's only positive, you know, that's a great first step. Cool. Thank you, Jonathan. Um, if you want to wrap up real quick and just kind of talk a little bit about, um, you know, obviously you're kind of making these talks um, to share this information about LinkedIn, but if you kind of want to talk a little bit about you, tell everybody about some of the stuff that you're doing, that's great. I'm um, sure. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll just, the, the first thing for uh, social HP, um, the platform is basically, it's an employee advocacy platform. So it's a social sharing platform. 
Um, so if you have a bunch of employees and you want them saying good things about you and you want to control that message, LinkedIn's the ideal platform, but it, we do share content, like it'll allow you to share content onto other platforms. Um, but the idea is that, um, you know, you don't have to go looking for all of it. It pulls all the thought leadership industry news and company content in, and then you can automatically have your employees share it out. So you don't have to constantly be like, Hey, Sarah. Hey, Steve. Hey, Mike. Can you guys please share this story? Can you please share that story? Can you please do this? Can you please do that? You can just automate the whole process and that makes it super easy. So I would say, you know, that's, you know, if, if you want to think about, you know, the next step, if you've got a company that's, you know, large enough where you want employees to be sharing uh, thought, you know, stories out uh, and, uh, and you don't want to do any heavy lifting, then that's the kind of tool that you want to look at. Um, otherwise, uh, you know what? Uh, I'm, I'm just happy to, uh, to help and, and disseminate some information about the LinkedIn platform and, uh, and some best practices. And, and hopefully uh, there was some value for everybody from it. Cool. Well, thank you. Um, everybody saw Jonathan's LinkedIn profile as he shared it with you. So if you uh, want to hunt him down and, and uh, send him a uh, friend request, um, see if he remembers who you are and friend you. Um, <laughs> otherwise, thank you, Jonathan, for joining us today. It was a fantastic opportunity to do a deeper dive on LinkedIn, learn more about how people can utilize LinkedIn uh, to their benefit. Um, can people reach out to you? Yeah, um, sure. Yeah, if anybody wants to connect, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to, uh, to do that. And then um, if people have any follow-on questions, uh, if it's technical, I'm not that technical. I'm more of like the I can talk about it, but I can't do it kind of guy. Um, so I remember things and I can talk about things, but if you ask me to, you know, what's the dimensions of this or how do I click on that and do that? I, I literally have no idea. I worked there for so long, but still have no idea how to do stuff. And that is the way of it, isn't it? It's yeah, like, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you everybody for joining us today. Um, hope you have a great rest of your day. Uh, make sure you check out the chamber calendar, macechamber.org for upcoming events. I know that we have orientation coming up on the 20th. So make sure that you are signed up for that. Uh, we have a great partnership with Mesa Community College for LinkedIn, or not LinkedIn, but for Excel. That class is coming up in June. So please check the calendar. And if you need help using Excel as an accounting tool for your business, you can sign up for that right off of the Chamber website. With that, Jonathan, thank you again one more time for joining us today. Everybody have a great day and um, go get them. Stay connected to Mesa Chamber social media, email newsletters, Monday morning message, and mesachamber.org to always know what's happening at your Mesa Chamber.